Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back in the episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Nicomunda, build their starting rosters, and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on today's episode, we will discuss playing a House Orlock Outcast gang in your campaigns of Nicomunda Ash Wastes. We will be talking about the strengths and weaknesses of playing an Outcast gang from House Orlock at the same time give will be providing you guys three starting rosters that you can use in your very first campaign at 1400 credits so that being said let's get this video on a roll all right, so when it comes to playing a House Orlock Outcast Gang, many people might wonder why would you want to play one? And the reason why is because in an Outcast Gang, you have much cheaper fighters, but at the same time, though, you have access to all of House Orlock's weapons and equipment. This is a very versatile gang, depending on how you kind of kit it out. Uh, House Orlock has always been versatile, not necessarily because their stats are so great, but because of the different types of weapons and equipment they get access to for their gangs. They have powerful shooting weapons, they got excellent melee weapons, and they also have versatile war gear, too, to kind of help out whatever environmental challenges that you might face. Now, when you combine the strengths of an Hourlock gang with the cheap uh, cost for the fighters of an Outcast gang, it equals automatic win because you can fill more fighters with better weapons and equipment and you can overtake your opponent as well. And because of that, this is the this is the House Outcast gang with the most flexible and most versatile builds as well. And the reason why is because of the nature of an Orlock gang. If you want to go the shooting heavy gang, you can do that. If you want to go the close combat gang, if you want to do that, you can do that too. If you want to go the equal balance of close combat and shooting, you can do that as well. If you want to have more massive people with a bunch of weapons, uh, just kind of cheap weapons with some equipment, things of that nature, you can do that too. The list is pretty much endless that you can come up with at the House Orlock Outcast Gang. Now, now that we're done talking about why you might want to play one, let's go ahead and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of playing a House Outcast Gang. So first of all, let's talk about the strengths of playing a House Outcast Gang. First of all, Outcast Gangs have cheaper leaders, champions, and fighters than normal House Gangs. All right, especially when it comes to leaders, you actually have four different stat lines you can actually choose to make your leaders, so they're very, very versatile. Or you can actually substitute that leader character with a Dramatis Persona leader and uh, from that specific house. So for example, let's say you want to have a house agent to lead your gang, you can possibly do that because all you got to do is take that stats, pay for the cost, and use that to lead your outcast game, which allows you to make some really, really cool options and a lot of different types of gangs and add a lot of variety to the gangs that can be fielded in a campaign of Necromunda. At the same time, you also have access to all the same weapons, war gear, brutes, hangarons, upgrades, all the different kind of game mechanics that you can purchase for a gang. You can also put that for your outcast gang as well because it's also relatively available. Because as a outcast uh, house outcast gang, you have access to those house gear. At the same time, you also gain access to the starting gear that comes with um, with the outcast gang. So for example, if you want to use a chain sword, for example, and normally house gangs, your house gang can't have that. Well, you can use it because now it's available to your outcast list, which is kind of nice as well. And at the same time, your champions and your leaders also have no weapon and equipment restrictions from the house list either, which is also really nice too. So for example, if you have a fighter with specific gear that can be taken by the entire gang, so for example, if you have a prospect level character who's the only character that can take that type of weapon for a house gang, well, in an outcast gang, it's free reign. That weapon can go to any fighter that you want, which is really, really awesome as well. So because you can make some really powerful exploits as well as some very powerful combinations for your outcast gangs. Now, with all the strengths involved of playing an outcast gang, there are some notable uh, weaknesses, and let's go ahead and talk about that next. All right, so let's talk about the obvious weakness of playing an outcast gang. Outcast champions and outcast scum have pretty mediocre stats compared to their house specific counterparts, okay? So they're especially their psychology stats, like there's uh, leadership, cool, willpower, same thing with intelligence. They're kind of mediocre at best, and same thing with their combat stats as well. So they may not be as good as house specific champions and house specific scum. At the same time, you don't have access to the same type of skills or some special abilities and some unique game mechanics of the normal house lists, all right? So for example, if there's a very unique kind of skill uh, that's specific to a house, you won't be able to access that because your outcast scum only have access to cunning, for example, as a primary skill, and your champions can only take archetype specific skills. So you can't, you know, get those other skills from that. So that part is kind of sad as well. At the same time, you also have some fears of restrictions on your alliances as an outcast gang. If you're a house outcast gang, you can only take house 
specific alliances only. So whatever alliances, strong alliances that a noble house takes, uh, those are the only alliances you can make. So if you're really big on the whole alliance game system, just be aware that your alliances will be severely uh, limited if you play a house outcast game. And as always, when it comes to outcast games specifically, you'll need to beware the wrath of the balance bandwagon. Unfortunately, the balance bandwagon will always find some way to scream and cry overpowered and balance and cry salty bitter tears of uh, why they're losing their games. So just be aware that every single time you play an outcast gang, you will have to deal with the balance bandwagon of some sort, and they're always lurking about hiding in the shadows ready to spring upon you. So just be prepared to deal with that level of immaturity and just learn to move on beyond it. So because the balance bandwagon is a legitimate thing you gotta worry about. So now that we're done talking about the strengths and weaknesses of playing a house gang, uh, outcast gang, let's go ahead and talk about specifically about this house and the kind of benefits you could expect from it in your outcast gang. So now that we're talking about the strengths and weaknesses of playing an outcast gang from House Orlock, let's talk about some potential issues that you might run into trying to play an outcast gang from House Orlock. Potential issue number one, there's actually two of them in this gang. First of all, the big name mechanic. Now, if you guys are aware from the House of Iron book that came out for the Orlocks, they do have an interesting, unique game mechanic, as do all the different house gangs that have come out so far. And their house mechanic is called Big Names. Pretty much, the Orlocks have nicknames that they give that they actually give them different perks as well as different drawbacks, depending on upon the name that they take for themselves. Now the question is, does an outcast gang have uh, have access to these big names? Now there's two arguments you go with this. The yes argument states that yes, these names are, are earned due to reputation. And even if you're an outcast, you can still keep the reputation that you had before, or maybe the things that you've done before, like the exploits that you've done, or the amazing achievements that you've done. So because of that, those nicknames would stick with you for the rest of your life. Now there's also a flip side to this as well. The oh no argument would state that you're since you're an outcast gang, you're an outcast gang for a reason and so maybe that's why no one respects your reputation that's maybe that's why you don't get a big name anymore because no one cares who you are anymore because the only people who do care are people from the underhive but then again you know it's kind of pretty much up to the uh, arbitrator to decide on this issue. So when it comes to big names for your gangs, talk to your arbitrator because they're the ones running the campaign and they'll give you the following ruling on whether your gang can use big names or not. For me personally, I would say yes just because it's the rule of cool and that's what I always default on, but that's just me. Now the second potential issue is, can your outcast gang take House Orlock Outrider quads? Now the reason why I bring this is because it's a unique vehicle that is unique to House Orlock since the arrival of the Ash Wastes. Um, as, this, as more releases come out later on, this is going to be a potential issue for all the different outcast gangs that we talked about. Um, at the time that I made this video, there wasn't any new vehicle specific stuff for other gangs, so that's what we're going to talk about. Now the reason why I say this could be a potential issue is because um, in the Ash Wastes rulebook, uh, what you call them, uh, the Iron Riders, which are the vehicle crews that are unique to House Orlock, they have access to the Outrider Quad. However, according to the Outcast rules from the Book of the Outcast, you can also purchase the same weapons, wear gear, and boots, etc. from your house gang. So that leads us to the Yes argument. The Yes argument will state that you're allowed to recruit these same weapons, war gear, brutes, etc. as a normal house gang would, so that would dictate that you could take Outrider quads as well. You wouldn't be able to take the Iron Riders because the Iron Riders are a house-specific fighter and you're not allowed to take house-specific fighters in Outcast gang. So it's kind of on the fence. And that's what brings us to the no argument. The no argument says you're an outcast for a reason, so you might not be able to take one either. And this is the other potential issue that also runs into the case as well. So because of that, I would suggest you take this potential issue to your arbitrator if you decide to play a House Orlock outcast gang and see how they rule on that as well. Because after all, like I said before, uh, they're the ones running the campaign, so their final say is what really matters in your campaign as well. So now that we're done talking about potential issues, let's talk about exploits. Now, unlike other outcast gangs that we've talked about before, there is no single exploit really that you could really use with a House Orlock gang. The only exploit you have with an Orlock, Orlock outcast gang is the amount of variety of weapons and equipment that you can take from over from other gangs. For example, this gang can get combat shotguns, bolt guns, there's a whole list of special weapons, heavy weapons that's all yours for the taking that you can use for your gang as well. Not to mention the stuff that your normal outcast hives can already come with as well. So, you know, and, and the best way to think of this is like, imagine a house orlock greenhorn because they pretty much have the same cost but unlike a greenhorn that has got horrible stats the 
uh, outcast hives come up better stats and they have access to better weapons as well. At the same time, probably the biggest exploit you could probably use is that you can use Clan Mardena, uh Dramatis Personae as your gang's leaders. Uh, because this is an outcast gang, you can take Dramatis Personae as your gang leader. So if you want to use the three characters that have come out so far from the uh, Clan Mardena for your guys' uh, gang, you could possibly do that, which is all kinds of awesome as well. So now that we're going to talk about exploits, let's talk about the individual fighters that you can recruit in an outcast gang. Now before we go to the gang list, of course, let's talk about the other fighters you have available to you. First of all, you do have your Underhive Outcast Champion. These guys cost 60 points apiece. They have 5 inch movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill. They have 3 strength, 3 toughness, 2 wounds, 4 initiative, 1 attack. They have 6 leadership, 7 cool, 8 willpower, as well as 8 intelligence. Now when it comes to your Outcast Champions, they actually are pretty versatile with their stats and the roles within your gangs can be fulfilling a lot of different roles for your gang. Now there is some negatives of course of playing outcast champion and that is your archetype. Your archetype is very limited for the type of skills that you can take for your gang. For example, you have five different archetypes you can take which are brawler which gives you brawn as your primary with frosty and leadership as your secondary, gunslinger which makes shooting your primary with agility and leadership as your secondary, you have survivor which gives you a ferocity skill as your primary with combat and leadership as secondaries, you have mastermind which gives you cunning as primary with, sec with leadership and savant as secondary and then you have the weird archetype which makes you have your weird powers and disciplines be your primary with cunning and leadership secondary so you are kind of limited in the type of skills you can take but you know them's the breaks about actually playing a outcast champion now there are some positives of playing outcast champions one their equipment is only limited by the rarity value on the trading post so if you wanted to get other equipment besides the house starting lists uh, that you're, you can buy from, your rarity value is only determined by, I think, value, rarity value 8 or lower is what it is. So you can pretty much take whatever you want on that case, which is really nice. And another positive about playing an Underhouse, uh, Underhive Outcast Champion is that you can take one champion for every three Hive scopes. So you, because of that, you have a lot more champions in your gang as the campaign develops. And of course, let's talk about the core of your gang, which is going to be your Underhive Outcast Hive Scum. Now, for these guys' stats, they have uh, they cost 30 credits apiece. They have 5-inch movement, 4-plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, 3 strength and toughness, 1 wound, 4-plus initiative, 1 attack, and they have 8-plus for leadership, cool, willpower, and intelligence. So unfortunately, the Outcast Hive Scum stats are very mediocre. But the positive is they're extremely cheap to fuel, only at, only at 30 credits a piece, which is significantly cheaper than a lot of other gangs, as well as in some cases some juvies for some of the house lists that you can actually purchase from. So that part's kind of cool. Not to mention, your hive scum also count both as gangers as well as juvie level fighters in your gang as well. And that's really nice because for every three hive scum that you have in your gang, in your outcast gang anyways, you can take one additional champion. Now, because their stats are so mediocre, that also means that the outcast hive scum is very versatile because it can fill any many different roles that you want with your gang. You can make them close combat fighters, you can make them shooters, you can give them psychic powers if you're able to do so through some kind of exploit. So that part is really, really nice about hive scum. They're very, very versatile and they can fulfill a lot of different jobs. Now, Here's another unfortunate part. Unfortunately, when you create your outcast gang, you cannot take a specialist right off the bat. You have to have that uh, pop up later on as you gain experience. So you can't have to start off with any special weapons for your specialist as a campaign starts. But that's not so bad though. And the reason why is because the weapons they can purchase from the house lists and at the same time, you also have access to more champions than normal gang does as well. And that pretty much makes it my take on the outcast hive scum. All right, so let's talk about our gang list real quick. So this is list number one. I like to call this the Sump Dogs House Orlock Outcast Gang. It's going to cost you 1,400 credits. Your leaders could be Slate Moderna, the Dramatis Personae character from the original book of the uh, the book of gangs, the gang book that came out originally for Nicaragua. This guy's going to cost you 360 credits. He's going to be a Dramatis Personae with a survivor archetype. You're going to equip him with mesh armor, custom plasma pistol, power hammer, frag grenades, photo goggles. He's also got Mecula, which is his uh, dog that he has for a Cyber Mastiff. He's also going to come with fearsome iron will as well as nerves of steel and you'd give him the berserker charge and give him additional attacks as well as additional knockback as well so that's what you could take for this guy slave moderna and after that you got two outcast champions outcast champion number one's gonna cost you 185 credits you'd give him the gunslinger archetype with mesh armor as well as a plasma gun you're also gonna equip the stub gun with dum-dum rounds for a backup weapon and give him the fast shot ability so they could fire that plasma gun twice outcast champion number two is gonna cost you 150 credits this guy's got the mastermind archetype they're packing mesh armor as well as grenade launcher with frag and crack grenades they also have a stub gun with dum dum rounds as well as the overwatch skill so that way they can interrupt enemy activations with a grenade launcher 
After that, you got two Hive Scum. Scum number one and two, they're both equipped exactly the same as City 5 credits apiece. Both have mesh armor, chain swords, as well as stub guns. So these guys would be oriented for close combat. And you got two more Outcasts, Scum number three and four, both costing you 45 credits. They're both packing auto guns. And then lastly, your Scum Racer is going to cost you 465 credits. You are taking 65 credits away from your gang, but you're doing that to put into your vehicle. And it's going to be a custom heavy vehicle with a crash cage. It's also got extra armor to give it additional toughness, a transport bed, tire claws, and all-wheel steering for better handling nitro burners for additional speed smoke fence so that way your enemy has minus one to hit you with shooting a heavy stubber for a weapon body spikes to prevent enemies from boarding your vehicle and boarding ramps so that way you can board your enemy vehicles and this is what i like to call the sub dogs house orlock outcast gang now this one uh, for the gang overview, if you want to take over the wastelands by playing the Sump Dogs from the lore of Necromunda, well, this is going to be the game that you'll be playing, and you're playing them as if they're the first guys, first time they're going to be showing up on the scene, to represent the fact that they're just brand new to the wastelands. This gang is a very simple gang to field and to use using traditional support and assault fire team builds to achieve victory. This is a pretty standard game build and using one support fire team and one assault fire team. While their vehicle may not appear all that impressive, it is designed for survivability with all the stats they put on that thing. Now your support fire team will consist of Outcast Champion number 1, Outcast Scum number 3, Outcast Scum number 4, as well as your Scum Racer. This fire team primarily fights from the heavy vehicle, and the heavy stubborn auto guns engage enemies at distance and suppress them. Meanwhile, Outcast Champion number 1 attacks enemy vehicles and high value targets with their plasma gun, exploiting that fast shot ability so that way they can fire their plasma gun twice. After that, your assault fire team consists of Slade Madrena. Macula, his Cyber Mastiff, Outcast Champion number 2, Outcast Scum number 1, and Outcast Scum number 2. This fire team either fights dismounted or boards enemy vehicles. Their combinations of pistols and close combat weapons make them perfect for flanking and assaulting enemy positions. Meanwhile, Outcast Champion number 2 provides covering fire for the fire team by engaging enemies with frag grenades, firing from the grenade launcher, while the rest of the assault team floats all through. And at the same time, don't forget, because you got that Overwatch ability, you can interrupt enemy activations with a grenade launcher. And this makes up the very first list, which I like to call the Sump Dogs list. Now, list number two is what I like to call the Dust Sea Road Crew. It is a House Orlock Outcast gang, and you will cost you 1,400 credits. Your leader is going to be Margo Mardena, the Dramatis Persona character. She's going to cost you 140 credits. This is the character that was available to you as a house agent from the Book of Iron, which is the house-specific uh, Orlock gang book from that one as well. Now, this character is going to have the Survivor archetype. She's got mesh armor as well as leg blades and harpoon fists as well as a respirator. She also has the Bring It On skill, Clamber, Spring Up, and Sprint skills as well, and you're going to give her the Nerves of Steel skill from her survivor archetypes because she's going to be shot at a lot because she's very very much close combat oriented after that you have outcast champion number one and outcast champion number two both of them cost 170 credits but both of them are equipped differently outcast champion one's gonna have the survivor archetype they're gonna be packing mesh armor and a last cutter as well as auto pistol for a backup weapon and they got the berserker charge ability to double the number of attacks they get outcast champion number two is going to cost you 170 credits this character's got the brawler archetype they get equipped with mesh armor as well as a master crafted arc hammer so that way they can re-roll missed attacks they have an auto pistol for a backup weapon as well as bull charge to give them knockback for their attacks as well after that, you got two outcast scum, number one and two. Both cost 150 credits apiece. Both are equipped with wasters, dirt bikes, a sawn-off shotguns, flails, as well as blasting charges. Then you have two more outcast scum, number three and four. Both cost you 55 credits apiece. Both are equipped with last guns, as well as last pistols for backup weapons. And then you have two Scum Racers. Scum Racer number one is going to cost you 280 credits. They're equipped with a Ridge Runner with a missile launcher, that's frag and crack grenades, uh, crap missiles rather. And then Scum Racer number two has got 230 credits. This one's a Ridge Runner armed with a motor. And with that being said, that brings up the list we like to call the Dust Sea Row Crew. So let's talk about the gang overview now that we're done talking about its contents. Now this is a very mobile, hard-hitting gang combined with a good balance of shooting as well as close combat. This gang exploits their vehicle's high maneuver value to zip around the battlefield and lay suppressing fire with heavy weapons but at the same time can assault through an objective and finish their enemies in close combat. Now this list does consist of three fire teams. You have one support fire team and two assault fire teams. Your support fire team consists of scum racer number one and two and outcast scum number three and four. The scum racers move towards the enemies to allow Margo Mardena, outcast champion number one, and outcast champion number two to dismount 
or board enemy vehicles. Now, once that's accomplished, they peel off and they suppress the enemy with their missile launcher and their motor. Scum Racer number one engages enemy vehicles with their missile launcher, while Scum Racer number two attacks enemy infantry that is dismounted with their motor. Now, while this occurs, also Scum number three and four engage enemies at distance with their last guns. I highly recommend equipping these fighters with telescopic sights as soon as possible to make them more effective, and at the same time, hotshot power packs to make their weapons even stronger. Now, Assault Fire Team number one consists of Margo Mardena, Outcast Champion number one, and Outcast Champion number two. Margo Mardena, as well as the two Outcast Champions, stick together as a team, flanking and engaging the enemy with their close combat weapons. They should make short work of their opponents with their combination of powerful melee attacks with the last cutter, as well as with the uh, uh, arc hammer, and not to mention Mardena's own uh, harpoon fist, as well as leg blades, could also cause a lot of chaos as well. Now your second assault fire team consists of outcast scum number one and two. This fire team flanks the enemies and charges forward, meeting up with the assault fire team number one by attacking the other flank. As they drive, they can hurl blasting charges at enemy targets, defend themselves with their sawn off shotguns, and finish enemies off by exploiting the ride by rules by using their flails. And this is what I like to call the Dusty Road Crew build. And lastly, list number three, I call this Vespa Swarm. It is a House Orlock Outcast gang at 1,400 credits. Your leader is going to be Vespa Minx Merdena. She's going to cost 245 credits. This is the special character that was available from the book of Cinderac Burning Book that came out uh, very recently. Now, she's a dramatic persona, and you give her the gunslinger archetype. She's got her custom automatic firing missile launcher, Mischief. She's also got a custom stub gun, as well as Orlock Outrider Quad. She's also got the Jinx skill, Trick Shot skill, and you'd give her the fast shot skill. Now the reason why that is the case is because Mischief is a custom uh, missile launcher and the unwieldy rules are not attached to that weapon if you look at the traits. So because that means it's just a normal weapon which means you can use fast shot which means you can fire that thing twice which is all kinds of awesome. After that you got two outcast champions number one and two. Outcast champion number one is going to cost 180 credits. They're equipped with a gunslinger archetype. They got mesh armor as well as a plasma gun with stub gun and fast shot. After that outcast champion number two is going to cost you 145 credits. This character's got the mastermind archetype Type. They're equipped with mesh armor as well as grenade launcher with frag and crack grenades. They also got a stub gun as well as overwatch skill. After that, you got two outcast scum number one and two. Both are equipped exactly the same at 60 credits apiece. Both have shotguns with saw as well as scattered ammo. And then you're going to have three scum racers in this game. Scum racer number one is going to cost you 240 credits. They're driving a ridge runner with a mining laser. Scum racer number two is going to cost you 260 credits. This fighter is driving an Orlock Outrider quad with a heavy bolter. And scum racer number three is going to cost you 210 credits. It's an Orlock quad. Rider, uh, 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 Orlock Outrider quad with a harpoon launcher. And this is what I like to call a Vespa's Swarm. So now that we're done talking about the content of that gang, let's talk about its overview. This gang is a high-speed gang built to zip around the battlefield to create as much havoc as possible. There is a downside, however, for only four of the fighters can fight dismounted, so this could be a problem for some scenarios that require uh, seizing objectives, etc. However, the amount of firepower this gang brings to the tabletop will make short work of most enemies, so keep that in mind when you field this. Now, this gang consists of two fire teams, one support fire team and one assault fire team. Your support fire team consists of Outcast Champion number one, Outcast Champion number two, Outcast Outcast Scum number one, Outcast Scum number two, and Scum Racer number one. This fire team is mounted on the Ridge Runner and they primarily fight from it as well. Outcast Champion number one and Scum Racer number one target enemy vehicles with their plasma gun and mining laser, respectively. Meanwhile, Outcast Champion number two, Outcast Scum one and two can fight dismounted, seizing objectives, and taking out enemy fighters with their grenade launchers and their shotguns. The grenade launcher can also interrupt enemy activations because of the Overwatch skill, so keep that in mind. Now, your assault fire team consists of Vespa Mix Mordena, Scum Racer number two, and Scum Racer number three. These are the three Outrider quads that you have in your gang. This, game, this fire team's job is to assault and expose enemy flank. Vespa uses mischief to engage enemy fighters or vehicles, depending on the situation, firing rapid fire crack missiles at vehicles and frag missiles at targets. Don't forget she's got the fast shot ability. She can fire twice. Uh, if you want to, you can actually do a mixed fruit, one time with uh, cracks, one time with frags, or whatever the situation may be. At the same time, skip racer number two and three, engage enemy fighters with a heavy bolter as well as a harpoon launcher. And this is why it's a call Vespa Swarm. All right, so in conclusion, playing a house outcast gangs is one of the coolest gangs you could possibly play in Necromunda. Outcast gangs have more access to fully customizable leaders with either Dramatis Personae or custom leaders you build, making some of the most amazing, interesting gangs that are available to play in this gaming system. Not to mention outcast gangs also have cheaper champions and fighters than normal house gangs, but at the same time, you have access to all the same weapons, war gear, brutes, and hangarons that a house gang automatically comes with. 
Meanwhile, there are no weapon and equipment restrictions from the house list either. So whatever the house list has available to you, you can use that to all of your fighters, regardless if it's a fighter specific gear, it could be taken by your entire gang as well. Now, of course, as always, there is a drawback to playing a house outcast gang, and that drawback comes in the form of the Balance Bad Wagon. So you'll always have to put up with the immature and hateful speech of Balance Bad Wagoneers, who will do things like cry out arguments of overpowered and game imbalance, instead of looking for creative solutions to solving their problems or just getting better at playing the game. They'd rather blame you than, you know, reflect on their own performance and make adjustments accordingly. So keep that in mind if you decide to play a house outcast gang. So that's good to do it for this week, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do it for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.